At one point, Adam Sandler was one of the most successful comedy actors in Hollywood. After a brief but notable stint on SNL, Sandler became, for an entire generation, the quintessential lovable doofus. His first few post-SNL movies were wild successes in the cable and home video markets, and in subsequent films, he proved to be a leading man who could act with heart. More recently, though, Sandler's taken quite a fall from professional grace. After a bunch of box office flops, here are a few reasons his career appears to be nearly beyond repair. Over it The infamous Sony hack in 2014 revealed a lot of embarrassing information about the studio, and also a whole bunch of drama. Leaked emails revealed that, on a professional and seemingly personal level, people at Sony were over Sandler and his movies. According to Vulture, one employee wrote, There is a general blahness to the films we produce. We continue to be saddled with the mundane, formulaic Adam Sandler films. <laughs> is that right? Whoa! Rough Decade? While his movies were never beloved by critics, some of Sandler's work in the last decade has been bad enough to make history. On the Wikipedia page called List of Films Considered the Worst, there are 10 movies listed for the 2010s, and Sandler produced or starred in three. Since 2009's Funny People, every single movie he's produced or written has been certified rotten by Rotten Tomatoes. Ouch. I mean, I just couldn't get the ball in the hole. I wanted to, but I just couldn't do it. No questions asked. Sandler doesn't appear to be interested in challenging his unfavorable media portrayal. Entertainment Weekly reported that early in his career, after doing press junkets for Billy Madison, he decided to stop talking to print journalists almost entirely. According to Screen Crush, Sandler said, I used to be misquoted all the time. This was a bold move at the time, and it's certainly a risk today, when an online presence makes publicity a highly competitive game, particularly with younger audiences. Push-up bras encouraged. Overt sexism is becoming increasingly less tolerated in the entertainment industry, and recently, Sandler has earned a few feminist wrist slaps. In June of 2016, actress Rose McGowan tweeted out a casting notice she'd received for one of Sandler's movies, suggesting that actresses wear form-fitting tanks that show off cleavage, push-up bras encouraged. The Daily Dot published a tongue-in-cheek piece entitled How to Be a Girl in an Adam Sandler Movie that accused Sandler of writing female characters who were, quote, all but a literal object. At the premiere for Hotel Transylvania 2 in 2015, he and co-star Kevin James, both in what appeared to be gym clothes, were photographed next to a very dressed-up Selena Gomez, prompting an internet controversy over the double standards for men and women. Been there, seen him. Comedy posses are nothing new, especially among SNL alumni, but Sandler's insistence on working time and time again with actors like David Spade, Kevin James, and Rob Schneider may be preventing him from reaching younger fans. In the case of The Do-Over, this resulted in yet another slew of disastrous reviews, with one IndieWire critic declaring Sandler a restless innovator who is still finding new methods of making bad movies. I thank you for beating the shit out of me grows on trees. When it comes to matters of money, Sandler has also apparently made a habit of rubbing people the wrong way. In one leaked exchange from the Sony hack, it was revealed that Sandler had tried to convince executives to cough up $200 million for a Candyland project, comparable to the budget of a Star Wars or an X-Men movie. According to Page Six, after that dead-end meeting, exec Amy Pascal wrote, Adam is an hole, and this is more his fault than anyone. Doug Belgrad, president of Sony's Motion Picture Group, added, He isn't the guy he once was, and nobody can make that better for him. On another occasion, Sandler reportedly tried to squeeze an extra $100,000 out of the studio as a fee for his producing partner, which the studio's movers and shakers balked at. Netflix Shackles In 2014, Sandler signed a four-movie deal with Netflix that has in many ways proven to be his best career move of the decade. He produced The Ridiculous Six, The Do-Over, and Sandy Wexler in short order, all of which were critically savaged. But according to Netflix, they get tons of eyeballs. In the years since inking the deal, the box office is no longer a consideration. With Netflix, he's seemingly become bomb-proof, to the point where one wonders if he'll ever return to work in the studio system that made him a star. And hey, maybe he doesn't want or need to. Either way, for now, he's staying on the small screen. In 2017, nearing the end of their deal, Sandler's camp and Netflix re-upped for four more films. So that's what I'll do. Thanks for watching. Click the grunge icon to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Plus, check out all this other cool stuff we know you'll love too.